this is Rachel with Good Behavior Beginnings, and in this video, I want to talk about how to maintain engagement while learning at home. So many of you may be doing homeschool, and some of you may be doing online school at home or some sort of a hybrid model. I don't know about your area, but in our area, there was a plan for kids to return back to in-person schooling that now has been delayed. So there were a lot of parents that were thinking they were just going to be maintaining their child's education at home for a little bit, and that has now extended more than they thought. So I wanted to provide some quick strategies, strategies that I think anybody can implement successfully to help maintain engagement while your learner is um, learning from home, regardless of the modality. So the first thing is going to be visual schedules. Um, we use a visual schedule that serves as like a to-do list of what we need to get accomplished during the day. I like to put it on a dry erase board so that the kid can mark them out and generally we keep the same routine each day. If your routine varies, it's even more valuable to have a visual schedule because then the learner can see what's on the schedule for today, what's the to-do list, what are they supposed to accomplish. For learners that may be attending online Zoom classes, it can be really helpful to have the schedule and have those specific times, maybe have alarms so that the learner is making it, logging in to the right class at the right time. Schedules can really help maintain engagement because the learner knows what to expect. They know maybe how long a task is going to take or how much work needs to be done before that task is finished. And they know what to expect coming forwards and what will be next. Another strategy that can really help maintain engagement is choice. If you are in control of the curriculum and the order of how things are presented during the day, then giving the learner that choice as to what they do next or what you work on first or maybe um, how you practice a certain skill, those can be really valuable and really help the learner maintain engagement because they have more of a say in it. If you don't get to choose the curriculum and you're not getting to choose the timing of some of those events, then that can't be something that the learner gets to choose. Maybe the Zoom sessions happen at a certain time, but maybe there are other choices that can be incorporated. So they can choose where they're sitting and logging in. Um, maybe it's by a window, maybe it's in their room, maybe it's on a beanbag. They can choose what kind of seating they're in. Um, a colleague of mine, their kid logs into Zoom, but half the time they're laying upside down on the couch because they just need to move around. So giving them a choice about where they're going to learn and then potentially like what materials. Again, some things may be designated that has to be done a certain way, but can they choose what color pen or pencil or marker or crayon or whatever? Can they choose the materials that they're using? Can they choose how to organize those materials in the product that they are completing? Um, whether it's taking notes or um, writing up something to then uh, turn into a teacher. If you do have flexibility, then you can add tons of choices. Instead of having the learner write to show that they know the information, can they demonstrate that by making a video? Can they demonstrate it by um, singing a song about it or acting it out or doing a poster? Um, are there other ways that they can demonstrate that knowledge? A third strategy is the use of behavioral momentum. Behavioral momentum basically just means that you're going to start with some easier tasks that the learner is likely to be very successful with and build up to the harder stuff. This is often why we do morning baskets or morning work. The idea is to start with something that's relatively easy, that gets somebody in the mindset of what else is coming on, the learning, um, the harder tasks in lessons. That means that you might start with a few practice warm-up questions, a review from previous times before you get to the more um, challenging 
thoughtful questions. Uh, if it's reading comprehension, that means that you might start by asking the fact-based questions where they can just look back in the reading material before you ask the questions that require inferencing and determining what the author's intentions were. Anytime you're going to work on a, on a challenging task, so for my learner it's writing, we want to start with things that are a little bit easier. Maybe we'll just write a little bit, we'll write a few words at a time, or they'll say it and I'll write it out, so then they just have to copy. Things we can do to make it easier and build up to those harder tasks. That's using behavioral momentum. A fourth strategy to use for maintaining engagement is breaks. The timing of breaks is super important for maintaining engagement for our learners. If you find that your learner struggles to sit through a longer lesson, break it up into smaller chunks. Take wiggle breaks, take breaks away from the screen, look out the window for a few minutes before you go back and do another online lesson on the screen. Take movement breaks, get up, wiggle, dance, exercise, go for a walk. Um, really, shut your brain off, switch it to something else to take a break from that academic stuff and do something else. It could be a fun activity. It could be something that is just more preferred than whatever the lesson was, or it could just be nothing. Just go and rest for a few minutes before we come back and move on. The key to breaks is going to be finding out how frequently your learner needs a break and giving the break before they reach the point that they're checking out. If your learner is attending a Zoom session and you find that they have a hard time sticking with the lesson during that time, that's when you really want to advocate on behalf of your kid to get the um, breaks and uh, communicate with the teacher to be able to take a break, whether that's just I'm going to move more while I'm still checked in or I'm going to turn my camera off for a few minutes while I take a quick walk or the teacher gives a break in these really long sessions. Um, really communicating with the teacher and advocating for what your learner needs to be successful. And then over time, you can build it up. So maybe they need a break every 15 minutes, but maybe we can start pushing for like 18, 20, 25, so that then they are able to sit and attend and really get that information across a longer lesson. That being said, if your learner is not attending, they're not learning. So if they're not engaged, they're not learning. Having them stare into a screen or zone out while you're trying to teach is not going to be effective in getting the information across. So if you see that someone's checking out, if you see that they're zoning out, mix it up, do something else, switch to a different activity, come back to it, or just get up and move and wiggle and get the, you know, get some oxygen going and, and wake back up before you resume that activity. A fifth strategy for maintaining an uh, engagement with your learner at home is reinforcement. So sometimes uh, reinforcement is thought of in a negative light that you have to provide this external stuff for your learner to be able to participate. And that's not always the case. Reinforcement is just going to be the delivery of something enjoyable after completing whatever skill you want to reinforce. So, for example, if I want my learner to pay attention for longer, then I'm going to determine what period of time that I think that they can do. So, let's say 15 minutes listening to me read from our literature book. And at the end of that 15 minutes, we're going to do something fun or enjoyable for the learner. Maybe that's we're going to watch a video. Maybe we're going to take a snack break. Maybe we're just going to play a quick game. Um, it might not even be that. For some learners, you can just give them a star or a check or a tally mark or a point. And at the end of the day, they cash those in for something. So we've often used 
uh, token systems like that where the learner is earning points and then at the end of the day those points translate into extra time on electronics or something like that. Um, it also can just be your praise and thanking them, your interactions. So, wow, you're doing such a good job on your math. I really like your neat handwriting. That makes me so proud to see how well you can focus. Your praise and attention is probably very motivating for your learners. And so using that strategically when they are doing those tasks that equal engagement. So they're sitting, they're listening, they're looking, they're writing, they're taking notes. You are attending to and praising those activities when you see the learner doing them. The last thing is make it fun. People don't disengage from activities that they find enjoyable. Now, again, if you don't have a lot of flexibility over the curriculum that you are using or the, that the learner is accessing, maybe online, then how can you make the environment fun while they're learning? But if you're homeschooling and you get to choose that curriculum, this is where, you know, maybe you're going off the textbook a little bit and you're incorporating lessons and activities in your daily life and you are doing more hands-on projects or you are, you know, making videos about it instead of writing stories about it. These are ways that you can make it more fun, make it engaging, get the learner to maybe come up with some of those ideas. Uh, my kid the other day wanted to make video of herself doing the lesson. So it was really funny because she got her little iPad, she set it up, and then she's like, okay, you give me the assignment and then I'm gonna record myself doing the assignment. And she did, and she was super engaged, and she was on task because she was making this video of herself doing her work. Um, I'm going to guess that maybe because I make videos on YouTube, she got that idea. Um, but uh, anyway, it was fun, and it was something that she wanted to do, and it was her idea, and she was super engaged with, like, the handwriting and the language arts tasks that are not preferred tasks. So be creative come up with ways that you can make it more fun make it more interesting get your learner involved and combining all of these things can really help to maintain engagement with your learner <laughs>